Hey everybody, today is Friday, October 14th, 2022, and we're here in Spring City, Pennsylvania, in the middle of a housing complex, which makes what we're about to see very interesting, very kind of maybe sort of creepy in a way, and just sort of bizarre that it is where it is, but it also makes sense as to where it is. But the fact that they built a housing complex right up against this is kind of is kind of strange. So again, here in Spring City, Pennsylvania, to take a look at something that should definitely not be forgotten, though unfortunately I think it kind of sort of somewhat is, but it's right down this trail right here that we have to be very careful on because we had torrential downpours last night and everything is very slick and slippery and incredibly muddy. And I actually slipped while walking down that hill right there a minute ago before I started filming. I did not fall, but I, I got my shoes all muddy, which I'm not too thrilled about. So having to walk up this little hill right here, a little treacherous, but we're good. We're, we're, we're good, we, didn't, we did not fall. So again, here in Spring City, Pennsylvania, behind this housing complex right here, you walk down this little trail and you come upon something that's very, very interesting, something in my opinion, very historical. You come upon a cemetery, but not just any cemetery. This is actually a cemetery for an old state asylum, the Pennhurst State Asylum. As you can see right here, it does say, in memory of those who die, died, while residents at Pennhurst dedicated 1978. Look at that. And there's all kinds of different graves out here for people who unfortunately, for whatever reason, were I guess not, not taken by their families or I have no idea why people were buried here. You would think that if you were a family member who brought your child, your relative, your whatever to the state asylum because they had some mental disability or they were handicapped or for whatever reason they needed to be brought here, you would think they would claim them if they had passed away. But for whatever reason, that was not the case for some unlucky people. They were not, they were not claimed and as such, they were buried here in the cemetery of Pennhurst on the very end of the property here at Pennhurst State School, State Asylum, if you will. The school actually opened up in 1908 and then closed down in 1987. And the reason, unfortunately, why it closed down is because of the way patients were being treated. There was a whole documentary that actually ended up getting released about the way patients were being treated, and it was not good. They were being abused. They were being made to sit in their own filth. They were being made fun of. It was just, it was a, it was a terrible situation for many other residents, unfortunately, who actually were here at the school trying to get help. The reason why they were here was because they, for whatever reason, the family members felt they couldn't function out in normal society and they needed to be here to be looked after, to be taken care of, to, to get the help, the, the proper help they actually needed to get because of a mental dis disability or because of whatever handicap they may have had. But unfortunately, they weren't being treated all that well. And as such, this school and many other schools like it actually shut down back in the 80s. So back, I was born in 1982, so I was still alive and in, living in this area when the school was actually still opened. And then after it shut down in the, like in the, into the late 90s, you were still kind of allowed to go back onto property. The streets were still considered public streets and you could drive on them, ride your bike on them, walk on them. All that stuff was okay to do. You just couldn't go onto the actual property of the school. So you used to be able to walk right up next to these creepy old abandoned buildings that were falling down and they, they looked like it was straight out of a horror movie. If you've ever actually seen a horror movie where they're at an old abandoned asylum like um, Session 9, something like that, that is exactly what it looked like. And I'm not saying we did or we didn't, but um, we may have, or we may have not actually snuck into some of those buildings as teenagers and into the tunnels that went underneath the, the streets that connected all the buildings and onto the property. It was really creepy. I, I mean, it may have been really creepy if we did that or if we didn't do that. But back in the 90s, if you got caught on property, the cops would say, hey, get out of here. What are you doing? They would, they would chase you out. Nowadays, if you get caught on Pennhurst property, you actually get a pretty hefty fine. So I highly recommend not going back there. Although for Halloween, they actually do a, a haunted asylum that you can go visit. So if you do want to see the actual property a little bit and see maybe what the inside of one of the buildings look like, you could actually go to the haunted asylum they do every October here at Pennhurst. But um, do not go into property otherwise because you will get a nice big fine. But you can come out here to the actual cemetery and pay your respects to those who were buried out here, those who passed away while residents at Penhurst, and again, for whatever reason, were not claimed by family members. I had heard some pretty horrible stories. I don't know how true they are about people dropping off children or dropping off family members that they just, for whatever reason, felt they could not take care of or they just didn't want to be burdened with and then forgetting about them. Just being like, hey, here's our kid. He has some mental handicap. 
take them and they just, they would never come back for them and they would never visit them. I've heard stories about that. I don't know how true that is, though I would be willing to bet that it's probably the case, hopefully not, not a, a common case, but I would be willing to bet that that did happen occasionally to some people, unfortunately. And maybe some of these people are those people who actually had that, that problem. As you can see, there's a lot of a lot of names here. For instance, John here was born in 1873, died in 1920. Mortimer was born in 1961, passed away in 1919. George was only 19 years old when he passed away, born in 1900, died in 1919. Another 1919, 1918s, 19, a lot of 1918s here, which was actually during the influenza outbreak. So maybe these people possibly died of the Spanish flu of influenza. That's my assumption. Yeah, there's a lot of 1918s, 1919s. It was definitely during the time of the influenza outbreak. So yeah, lots, lots and lots and lots of 1918s. That's my guess. My guess is a lot of these people passed away due to influenza because I'm reading most of these. Most of these are indeed 1918. There are some 1919s, so 19, these are 1920. Over here, William Sh uh, Shaw, 19, or eight, yeah, 1908. So he was born right when this actually opened and then died in 1920. So a lot of people did not live to be very long. They actually were not very old when they passed away, 1912 to 1920. Sad to think of these children, these people who were definitely still considered children, passing away when they were here 1917 to 1933 right here was uh was ralph pretty crazy that this is here hidden back here behind this this housing complex all kind of sort of off i mean we are technically on penhurst property but we're sort of off property we're we're at the very outskirts of penhurst property that's where they put this but i believe there is a state law that all cemeteries have to remain open to the public, which is why there is this trail right here because you can't shut something like this down because if your family member does want to come out here and does want to pay their respects to one of their family members, they need access to this actual cemetery. So I believe it is a Pennsylvania state law that they have to, re this has to remain open and no matter what, no matter what happens to the actual Penhurst property or the, the housing complex, this will always stay here and will always be open for people to come actually come out here and pay their respects. So I highly recommend coming out here and paying your respects. Do not vandalize. Do not do anything bad. Do not come out here and do any rituals or anything like that. Come out here and pay respects to those who passed away. Do not steal name plaques. I'm seeing some name plaques missing. My guess is probably vandals took those, which is terrible to think about. I wish somebody would come out here and actually replace those. There's got to be some kind of documents about who is actually buried right here. I wish I could find out about that and maybe donate some money or something like that for somebody to come out here and put new name plaques on. It's a shame that there are some names without name plaques on them, probably because of some vandals or maybe just the weathering made the name plaques come off. I have no idea why. Here's Florence, 1898, again to 1918, probably dying of influenza. That would be my guess. But again, guys, here at the Pennhurst State School Cemetery, the kind of hidden cemetery, if you will, it's Again, it sits behind a housing complex. I don't think a lot of people know this cemetery is here, unfortunately. It is a shame. I wish they would kind of maybe open this up a bit more, maybe make some kind of memorial back here, do something to, to make it more accessible, to make, let people know that this is here so they can come out here and they can pay their respects. And I really wish we'd get some more name plaques, some name plaques put back onto these, these graves so we'd actually know who is buried here. We know who we're paying our respect too, but very interesting. I want to bring you guys out here, show you this, this cemetery, this hidden cemetery, this hidden mental asylum, if you will, hidden cemetery at Penhurst here in Spring City, Pennsylvania. Pretty crazy. Not a ton of people buried out here, but a decent amount of people buried out here. Again, I, I wish I knew why they weren't claimed by family members. Who knows why these people were, were buried here and not in a family plot. I have no idea why that's the case, but unfortunately they were not claimed by family. Maybe they didn't have family. They were buried out here in the cemetery of Penhurst. Pretty crazy. So, all right, guys, just want to bring you out here, show you this, let you know this is here. If you do come out here, definitely be respectful, pay your respects. As you can see, it is mowed. So they do keep this open for the public. Cause again, it is a state law, I believe that as 
as a cemetery in Pennsylvania, it has to remain accessible to people, which is why there is a little trail, why this is mowed, why they still actually maintain this area is for people to come back here and pay their respects to family members or just pay their respects in general to those who did pass away while a resident at Pennhurst State School. Sorry guys, if you come out here, bring some flowers maybe, pay your respects, don't steal name plaques, don't do anything weird, don't do anything crazy. I've heard people doing some crazy stuff out here. Don't be one of those people. Again, pay your respects, be very respectful in any cemetery you visit, especially one like this where these patients probably went through absolute hell from stories I've heard. These patients probably did not lead a great life, unfortunately, and probably suffered a bit while at this school. Hopefully not, but it is certainly a possibility that these people did suffer a bit while at the state school. And now they're buried out here. So come out here, pay respects. But all right, guys, I'm gonna let you guys go. So just want to show you this. It's interesting. It's, and I'm, I'm slipping on leaves. It is very slippery out here. But again, again guys, just want to show you this, this interesting hidden cemetery here in Spring City, Pennsylvania, behind a housing complex on the outskirts of Pennhurst State Asylum, which again, isn't actually a state asylum anymore. Closed in 1987. The buildings are now abandoned. From right here, they're actually tearing a lot of them down. Unfortunately, there was talks about turning it into a museum. I don't think that's going to be the case, sadly, but still very interesting. And this should always remain here. I can't imagine this would ever go away. So definitely get out here again and pay respects to those who passed away while residents at Pennhurst State School. But all right, guys, I'm going to let you go. So as always, thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And of course, check down below for links to Patreon. If you guys do become a patron, I will send you a postcard every single month. Also check down below for a link to Spreadshirt, uh, where you can pick yourself up retro rest stop t-shirts. Proceeds both from Spreadshirt and from Patreon do get help putting gas in Vanabelle and inside Pumpkin. So we can come out to fun, maybe not fun, but so we can come out to interesting places like this, like a, an old abandoned, not abandoned, but an old hidden, we'll say, hidden cemetery for those who passed away while in a state school. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you guys are subscribed or you do subscribe, I will see you in tomorrow's video. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.